Welcome to this new tutorial and in this video we are going to learn SQL PSM basics. So let's see what SQL PSM actually means. So PSM stands for Persistent Stored Modules and we are going to do all of this in the MariaDB database and we are going to use Python notebook for it. So as you can see I am opening the VS code here and it's getting ready for our work and as you can see there is a file procedural sqlbasics.ipynb so that is the python notebook file and in this particular python notebook file we have given you all the setup and the codes which we are going to learn in this particular tutorial so if you are watching this on youtube you can find the link to the to this particular lab on your youtube video description you can check that link out and you can try working on it side by side you will find the video there as well within the lab so that is also going to be very beneficial for you so let's get started with sql psm so what basically is sql psm means is that persistent stored modules so this means that we are going to store something and what we are going to store is that we are going to store some pieces of codes which we are going to use repetitively when we are trying to work with the databases and definitely this gives us an edge and it makes things simpler that's why it is here so the first things first we are going to start the mariadb server and since we are going to use its docker image so it will take some time because i believe we need to download the docker image so we are going to come here and we are going to hit this play button so that and also we need to select the in environment for this python notebook so we are going to click on this python environments and we are going to click on this recommended environment so as soon as we start you can ignore this particular warning and you can see it's unable to find the docker image internally so it is just pulling it from the docker hub so in the meantime what we are going to learn in this lab is that we are going to learn about control flow error handling and we are going to learn about the functions and the functions as well so let's see how we can cover these things so the as you can see the image is downloaded and the docker container has started so now we are going to make a connection to the database so basically we are using the mysql client for this particular mariadb image so as soon as we click here we can start this client and we have made the connection and after this hyphen e whatever command that comes it basically is the command that is going to be executed within the mysql client and we are basically going to create a database and if not exists means if the database already exists then it is not going to create it otherwise it would have given an error if a database exists and we are still trying to create one so that's what is being handled here in this command and so first things first we are going to see how a program structure looks like in sql psm if you know about plsql it is something very similar to it it has just a few changes in the syntaxes depending upon the database that we are using so let's learn about that first so here comes the explanation of the first program and this is the program itself so you can see it's a very basic program so it starts with file program 1.sql so this is a part of the python notebook so this is the indication to the kernel that we are going to create a file with, whose name is program 1.sql and basically this particular program 1.sql will have this code that is written after it and it will work as a sql script when we execute this script there is something that is going to happen which we are going to see in this video so what basically happens here is that we firstly write something as delimiter and then we give slashes here like this and then we end it with delimiter and we give this semicolon so what happens is that when we are executing sql commands or sql scripts this semicolon is is taken as or understood by the sql connector or the compiler whatever it is working behind that as the end of the command so after this the command starts execute and below this these are thought of suppose we are taking a scenario when the we are executing this dot sql file so firstly the commands will read all these things and when it comes here and sees this particular semicolon it will end the execution there and it will start again fresh from the next line Similarly, it will receive this and it will end it there. So to make sure that doesn't happen, we have this delimiter and this thing is called delimiter, which I just explained to you. So we have defined the delimiter as double slashes and we after the end, we have given this delimiter so that this whole code is take, taken under the consideration while the execution of this script is going on. This was the very basic thing. And now we see here we have create procedure. These are two keywords, create procedure. And then after that, we have the name of the procedure, which is hello world in our case. 
we have two parentheses we have to open close parentheses and after that so in sql psn we have blocks so this was the creation after the creating is done we have this block begin and inside this we are declaring variables so to declare a new variable we use the declares comma uh, declare keyword and after that we have named the variable as my variable and this is the data type associated with the variable varchar and after that to put uh, to give a value to the variable we can use this set command set after that my variable and then we give the variable value and next we come to this again this is going to print the mess uh, print the data to the uh, to your output so for that we use this select command like we do for sql queries as well and here we have given the variable name and this is as it just gives an alias if you have seen the sql basics so as we used to set an alias so for this my variable whenever we get an output it will come out with an alias of message so this was about the program structure or, or a general program structure in bsm sql so if we hit this play button you can see that the file is getting created here in program one and now we are going to execute this entire script and for that we are going to use this particular mysql command again here we if you see there is a change like we have entered the database that we are currently in so what this does is that it opens the mysql connector uh, mysql client and then it will get inside the student db and then it will execute the script out in from inside that so as soon as we hit this enter we have created our procedure or the stored procedure so whatever code we are going to do it works as a procedure and it gets stored into the database as procedures and we are going to then call these procedures so like that's why we have done this naming here and we are going to learn more about procedures in detail in our next lab on this sql psm which is known as sql psm advanced lab we are going to learn procedure functions and some other advanced concepts there so stick around and you can always check out the btechbasics.in website for these exciting labs on different computer science domain subjects and uh, they are very helpful to you as well. So let's move ahead and let's try to call this stored procedure that we have just created. So this is again the same MySQL connector command. And then we have this call hello world. So this is basically going to call the procedure that we have just created. So let's try to run it. And as you can see that it's coming in as message hello world. So this was our first program on SQL PSM that we have did. It was a hello world program. And now we are going to see one more important thing that we need to understand about procedures. So once we have done a procedure, we have saved it. After that, if I suppose if I want to make some changes here, like for example, here, if I want to make it as instead of this as I want to keep it just like that. So there is a slight change here. So I'm overriding the file. And now if I try to execute this, let's see what happens. So it shows an error and it says that procedure hello world already exists. So what this means is that we cannot overwrite a procedure. We can either create it, then delete and recreate it, but we cannot overwrite a procedure. So let's see how we can delete a procedure. So if you come here, you, everything is written step by step. Everything you can find in this in this Python notebook. So definitely you can check out the link in the description if you are watching this on YouTube and then you can go to the lab and see and experience it by yourself. So here the command is drop procedure if exists. And after that you have to write the procedure name. So this is the basic command that we are going to use if we want to, you know, drop a procedure. So let's try to drop this hello world procedure. And here I can just modify this command as well. Drop procedure if exists. And now if I just hit play and it's done, it's not going to show any output as of now because this command does not has any output. And now we are just going to go back to our call hello world command. And before executing, now if you try to execute this call hello world, it will also again give an error. And this confirms that hello world procedure has been dropped from the database. And now if we execute this, execute the script hello world.sql it will create it will it won't generate any error so it's created the procedure is again stored and now let's see if our changes reflect or not so as you can see it reflects because now it is giving just the variable name it is not giving it any alias so that's what about, that was about creating a procedure and dropping a procedure from a database and we have also wrote our first hello world program so now we'll move towards the a bit of more complicated things now 
it's not complicated but it's a new thing to learn if you have done programming so you will have understanding about conditionals so we are going to talk about if else and let's see how those things work in something like an sql psm so again the basic structure remains the same you are going to start off with delimiter then we are going to create a procedure and after that the things come in like after the begin statement is executed then we have some changes so firstly we have just declared a variable again which is known as result message and okay so in the creating of the procedure here also we have a little difference like you can see here we have declared a variable whose name is input value and after that we have written int so here it is the data type of that input values right so now if we see here so it is resulting up result message as varkar and now depending upon the value that we are sending into the procedure it is going to set some result messages and at the end it is going to print the result message to the table so here are the conditions like if else if else end so this is how you work if the condition is true after that we use this then so if then else if then else so this is the structure of an if else if or if then else so basically here we have if then else as compared to the other programming languages like c or c++ where you have if a condition then you maybe use parentheses or you have an indentation so that's the major difference here and the rest of the things remain same as we have learned so let's load this up so we have loaded this up to program 2.sql and now we are going to execute this particular sql script and as soon as it is executed we come to the next our executable command so here we in the same command we are just we have just three commands basically these are same we just have the call of the conditional example for three different values like for a negative positive and zero because here we have defined it that way if the input value is greater than zero then it should in output that the input is positive if it is less than zero then negative and if it is equal to zero or in the else case it will be showing as input value is zero so let's see how we get the outputs here so as you can see it prints basically three times message and the message is input value is positive so this is for the first case where we have given 10 as input and for the next case where we have given minus 5 as input we have got input value is negative and then we have got input value is zero so this was about conditionals if else uh, statements and now we are going to get into the real world scenario that where we are going to actually use these procedures because sql psm means whatever code or whatever program basically we are writing here it is going to help us in creating and working with the tables in the sql so basically what it does is that you will be we will be taking up an example where we will initially create a table whose name is numbers so again we will run this execu uh, execute this command that we will create a table numbers if it is not existing then and it has only one field that is numbers and its type is integer so basically what we are going to do in this program 3 is that if you can see here so we are going to learn about for and while loops these are the two looping techniques that we use in sql psm and using the loops we are going to load up the table using 10 values like so what basically we are going to do is here we are going to insert the numbers from 1 to 10 and we are doing this for two times one to ten first using for loop and then using the while loop and so what basically happens is that if you want to input 20 values so you have to write 20 times insert into command so you can just make it short by writing a few lines of code and you can use your programming logic logic here so till here it remains same till the declare part you have created the procedure you have begin the execution and after that declaration is done and then comes the for loop so here the for loop is written in this way that for is the keyword that comes first after that you declare the very uh, you just call the variable i and then we have in and this is the chain main change that we need to keep in mind so the lower bound and the upper bound is written and between them we have two dots and after that we use the do command to start the loop and after that inside whatever we have these are the basically these are the actions that are going to take place inside the loop or if you have multiple uh, multiple things written here like for example after after we have written insert into number values i we can also insert i into 2 here so let's try to do that as well so number so values and here we can keep it like i into 2 
So we are basically keeping the I and I into two. So you can put in any number of values that you want and those things will be executed together. And this was about the for loop and you can end for loop by writing end. So this is the basic structure. And for while loop, it is also similar. Like for, for while loop, we are starting with while. And here there is nothing like a range. We cannot define a range in a, for, in a while loop. So here we have a condition where it comes to an end. So it will run till j is less than equal to 10. So that means whenever j is equal to 11, it will stop running. And this is the end of the while loop with end while. So let's just load up this. So I made a slight change like here. I have just added an extra number. So like there will be total of 30 entries in the table. So never mind. We will also check it out if both the insert statements work inside the loop or not. And we have loaded the program 3.sql file. And now we are going to execute to save the procedure in our database. And there is some error it insert instead of instead there was a spelling mistake here. So let's just rewrite the file here. So we have just overwritten the program 3.sql and now everything worked fine. So the procedure is loaded up in the database. So now let's try to run it. And we have run the procedure. So we have called the procedure basically. So the data, the data is entered inside the numbers table. And with this, we are going to print the table numbers and see what it is to work. So one, two, two, four, three, six, four, eight. So this is happening because we have given two lines inside the for loop just to check that whether to work or not. And they work perfectly fine. And as you can see, these are all the tables and the output is truncated. This is because of Python notebook. And if you just click on scrollable el element here, then you can view all the data, right? Yeah. So that's what, that was about it. So we have learned about uh, conditionals. We have learned about the looping. So now let's see what we have next. So what we have next is that we're going to learn about exception handling. So exception handling is an exceptionally important topic in programming. So let's take a good look at it. So it's also very simple. So here, whatever happens is that suppose, and it is going to something that we are going to use very extensively as well in the industries as well. Because whenever there is some errors that is coming up, we need to handle it. Otherwise, the program or the website that you are working on, it will be in such a stage where it is not usable and not recommended for using it in a production level thing. So basically, everything remains same. Here we are basically using the if else, if else very uh, appropriately to, act, uh, to handle these exceptions. So let's see how the things work. So delimiter is same. After that, we have given the... Uh, we have given some input to that to the procedure and it is coming in as int type here is something like in so we are going to learn more about these procedures in the next tutorial till then we are going to learn about exceptions here so we are basically set two error messages as no data found and an error occurred and after that we are trying to retrieve something so we are trying to retrieve the salary of the teach of a specific teacher id from the table whose name is teacher salary so let's just create that teacher salary table first. So basically this is the table that we are going to create. So let's write into the create teachers table. And after that, we can just execute it to make sure the table is created. So here we have created the table and inserted three values like for IDs 102, 103, 104. We have given the teachers data data. So we have three values in the table. So now let's see what we are going to handle here. So basically what we are going to handle here is that when we are trying to query into a teacher salary table and we are giving in a teacher ID, which is, which is going to be passed into the procedure as an input. So what happens if the salary is null? So basically what happens is that a salary is null only when we have not given the value of the salary in the table or if that so ID, whatever we are entering is not available. So in that case, we are handling that with a select statement that we are giving up a result as an error message. And in that case, we are going to come here. And if that is not the case, if you have a value for the salary, then we are going to get that as well. And we are going to get the value of that salary as our output, right? So let's try it out. So first we will write this program 4.sql script. And as soon as it is written, so we are going to execute it to save the procedure into the database. And here we have two examples like 101 and 102. So for 101, what the scenario is that, that the teacher's data is not present and 102 as we have already seen the data is present. So let's see what are the outputs that we are getting. 
So as you can see, for the 101, we have seen that it's no data found. And for 102, the scene is that we have data found. So we have fetched the data and we have given it. So this was about uh, exception handling, guys. So we have learned the things about the PLSQL or SQL PSM basics. We have covered how we can write a basic PLS, PSM structure code and how we can do some looping into it. We have learned about conditionals and we have also learned about the exception handling in SQL PSM. So that's it for this tutorial. If you are watching this on YouTube, then go get a try on this by clicking the link of the lab in the description and you can also check out other labs that are present in btxbasics.in website.